thank you, man of God, for the great work you are doing. I want to prophesy to you this morning that the pleasure of God will prosper in your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for you shall see to the travail of your soul and be satisfied in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord continually will be your Ebenezer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, sir, for the good work you do. Hallelujah. I also want to appreciate my wonderful friend and brother, Apostle Mark Angela. Can we put our hands together for him? Hallelujah. He's a covenant brother. I've known him for years. And we are like twins with a wife. He's preached for us in our church in Lagos severally. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody say amen. I also spotted in the congregation somewhere back there, my father, somebody that helped me, he mentored me, he groomed me. When we had no form, no comeliness, there was no beauty in us that any man should desire. I served him while I was very young in secondary school, government college of Mahia in 1977. He's an accomplished man a pharmacist, but he left everything that God has made him to be and has pursued the way of kingdom sacrifice. He's somewhere at the back over there. Please, church, can you please help me and appreciate my father, my mentor, pharmacist, Ihani Ozoma. Please put your hands together for him. Hallelujah. Please, you can do better. Come on, you can do much better for him. Hallelujah. Right, let's go straight to the word of God. All protocols observe. Um, can you help me with the song? Is it possible? Okay, play it for me, please. It can go. Okay, God bless you. Right, let's open our Bibles to the book of First Corinthians chapter 10. All my life. You have been faithful all my life. You have been so, so good. With every breath I have ever heard, I will sing of the goodness.
let's read the word of God. I crave your indulgence that we all rise. First Corinthians chapter 10, please. First Corinthians chapter 10 from verse number 1 to 12. I want us to read congregationally. I want to hear everybody loud and clear. First Corinthians chapter 10 from verse number 1 to 12. Let's read. One, two, ready, go. I would not that you should be what? Ignorant. How that all our fathers we are under the cloud and all pass through the sea. I'm not hearing you, please. Can we all read number two, verse number two, loud and clear? One, two, ready, go. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was who? Christ. Verse five. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Uh -huh. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Now these things, we are our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Verse number 7, everybody. Neither be you what? Idolaters as we are some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to pray. Verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and we are destroyed of the serpents. Verse 10. Neither mama ye as some of them also murmured, and we are destroyed of the destroyer. Verse 11, now all these things happen unto them, for examples, uh -huh, that they are written for admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Verse number 12, finally, we are for, let him that think that he stand. Take heed. I want to minister this morning on what I titled, Serving the Lord Acceptably. Can somebody say, Serving the Lord? Come on, come alive. Say, Serving the Lord. Acceptably. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, I come in the volume of the books that is written concerning me. I come to do your will, O oh God. You are the one that takes away the first that you might establish the second. This morning, Lord, it is written that we have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem, where there are innumerable company of angels. We have come to the general assembly and to the church of the firstborn that is written in heaven. We have come, O oh God, before God the Father, even the Father of our Lord Jesus. He who is the judge of all men. The God who quickeneth both the living and the dead. We have come before the spirit of just men made perfect. We come this morning before Jesus, who is the mediator of a new and better covenant. We come before the blood of the sprinkling, even the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Lord, I prophesy that your blood will speak over this house this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, 
Who is this that cometh from Edom? We died garment from Bozrah. He that is glorious in all of his apparel, traveling in the greatness of your strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. My name is Jehovah. The heavens declare your glory. The firmament showeth forth your handiwork. Day unto day showeth speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no language of speech. We are the voices of men and women lifting up holy hands to a holy God is not heard. Their line is gone out to the earth and their words to the ends of the world. In them you have set a tabernacle for the sun. Are you not the bridegroom that cometh out of your chamber rejoicing as a strong man that is set to run a race? Who is like unto you? Who can be compared with you? You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praise. Doing wonders among the children of men. Ah, sweet Holy Spirit, fill this house. Do what no man can do. Let there be miracles. Let there be healings. Let there be deliverance in this house. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. You are fair like the moon, clear like the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. We bless you. We bless you. For great is the mystery of godliness. God was made manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the whole world, and received up to glory. Lord, one more time tonight, or this morning, upon this mountain, let there be a revelation of your glory. Somebody shout a better amen. amen. We thank you. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen. Men and brethren, this morning. By the grace of Almighty God, I would like to detonate the salvo of my ministration by rehearsing what I call the triumphant canticles of Almighty God. According to the book of Psalm chapter number 46 from verse number 1. It's so very important that I do this so that I can lay a very good and solid foundational framework for our discussion this morning. The psalmist said in Psalm 46 from verse number 1 downwards, he says, for God is our refuge and our help, a very present help in trouble. Is it therefore I will not be moved because God is my help. He is my refuge in the times of trouble. I will not be moved. He said, though the earth be removed from underneath my feet, he says, I will not be moved. Let the mountains be carried and thrown into the midst of the sea. He said, yet... In the face of these contradictions, he said, I will not be moved. Somebody shout, no checking. No come on, come alive. Shout, no checking. No Let the waters of the sea roar 
and be troubled. He says, I will not be moved. Let the mountains shake with great swelling thereof. He said, yet, I will not be moved. Why? He said, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. For God is in the midst of her. Therefore, she shall not be moved. For God will help her even right early. I've come to prophesy to somebody that the help of God is coming to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, shout the better. Amen. For God will help her. Even right early. In verse 7, he said, The hidden raged, and the kingdoms were moved. But the Lord uttered his voice, and the earth melted. For the Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. He said, Come, behold the works of the Lord, and see what desolations is wrought upon the earth. He maketh war to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spars asunder. He burned the chariots in fire. He said, Therefore, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the hidden. I will be exalted in the earth. For the Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I was asking the Holy Ghost, how come David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, was so very confident, even in the face of contradictions, in the face of adversities and calamities? Why was this young man so very confident? He said, it doesn't matter what's happening around me. He said, I will not be moved. And God said to me, that David was a man of the word of God. He was a man that knew me. David had an interaction. He had an intimacy with me. David knew that the words of the Lord are pure words. Like Caesar, tried in the furnace of the earth, he is purified seven times. David knew that the word of God cannot fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall not pass away. Somebody shout hallelujah. Peter was right in. He said, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus. David knew who he was talking about. David knew that God is not a man to lie. He's not the son of man to repent. Has he said a thing? Will he not do it? Has he spoken concerning you? And will he not bring it to pass? David knew that by two immutable things, it has become impossible for God to lie. And because God cannot lie, it has become our strong consolation. We have fled for refuge and we have taken hold upon this very fact that God cannot lie. We've taken refuge. We've led up, hold on the hope that he said before us. He said, which hope also is the anchor of our soul? David knew that so shall my word be. It's gone out of my mouth. In righteousness, it will not come back to me void. It will accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing wherein I've sent it. David knew. He knew God was not a man. David knew who he was talking about. And hear this, everybody. David did not only know the letter of the word. David also knew the spirit of the word. Somebody say amen. amen. I didn't hear you say better amen. amen. Because the Bible says the letter kill it. It's the spirit that give it life. 
David knew God. That's why Apostle Paul say, we know. Somebody say, we know. He said, I know in whom I have believed because I am fully persuaded that what I have committed into his hands is well able to keep it. Somebody shout, I know. Come on, I didn't hear you shout, I know. There's one thing about coming to church and just thinking about it that be fully persuaded. I know. That's what Apostle Paul says, for we know that all things are working together for the good of them that love God. He said, we know. Somebody shout, I know. know. David knew the letter of the word of God and he also knew the spirit. He knew. That's why he said in Psalm 42 from verse number 1, he said, as the deer panted after the water brooks, he said, so also my soul panted after you. He said, I am thirsty for the living God. He said, when can I appear before God? I love the Lord. I need the Lord. I cannot do without him. My soul is thirsty for the living God. Oh, my God. I remember when some of us gave our life to Christ in the early 90s. We loved the Lord. We saw the Lord. We slept in the church. We read the word of God. I read the Bible back to back. I was called the living word in my church, the Bible. Anywhere you want to talk, I will tell you what they say. We read the word. We had passion. We, have, we had hunger. We loved the Lord with all of our heart. We didn't come to God because of what we can get. We came to the Lord to just love him and to serve him with all of our hearts. And that's a contradiction today in church. Many people come to God not to love him, but to get from God. And that's why the church is such in a miserable state. But this morning, there shall be deliverance in this mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, David knew the letter. He also knew the spirit. In Matthew chapter 11, let me show you stuff this morning. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Please, can you just project it? Matthew 11, from verse number 28 to 30. Everybody, please read with me. Hallelujah. Let me hear you read. One, two, ready, go. Uh-huh. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, come unto me. All you that labor. Now, I've read this verse of scripture for many years. But recently, the Holy Ghost began to illuminate it. Gave me illumination. He said, come unto me. Come, come, come unto me. The first call every one of us have in the kingdom is to Jesus. We are not called to your pastor. Not to the apostle, not to the prophet, not to the evangelist. Every one of us, our first commitment and love is to him. He said, come unto me and I will make you fishers of men. Come unto me. God is a jealous God. If he does not get your love, oh, come on, you can't get anything from him. Come unto me, 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 me. All you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I love the next verse. He says, take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn of me. Somebody shout, learn of me. Oh, help me this morning. Shout, learn of me. One more time, shout, learn of me. He said, learn of me. 
He didn't say, learn about me. Mm. He didn't say, learn about me. He said, learn of me. Of me. If I want to know about our pastor, all I will do, just Google his name. And I will get information about him. Jesus, he said, learn about me. The church, we have learned about every other thing. But not about Jesus. We have learned how to resolve conflicts in church. Conflict resolution. We've learned about it. We've learned about church growth and retaining of church membership. We've learned about it, but not about Jesus. We've learned about all kinds of business models in church, but we've not learned about Christ. And that's why today we are bereft of power. That's why today the church does not carry the influence and significance that God had intended for her. Why? Because we have not learned of Jesus. They see the cash. Watch this. Everybody watch this. Jesus says, learn of me. Why? He says, I am meek. Oh, Jesus. He says, I am meek. And what? Lowly in heart. This is heavy. The word lowly in heart simply means humility. It means to be humble. I am humble in my heart. And I am meek. What is meekness? Meekness is power under control. I want to give you power that you must know how to control it. Not like Elijah that we call that fire from heaven. I give you power that you learn how to put it under control. Then, humility or to be humble. Hear this, everybody. When you talk about humility and to be humble, it is the exclusive preserve of the domain of Jehovah. Every time you hear about humility, it has to do with what? With God the Father. That's what the Bible says. God resists what? The proud. Come on, help me this morning. He says what? God resisted what? The proud. But he does what? He gives grace to the humble. Who resists the proud? Talk to me. Who resists the proud? God. He resists the but he gives grace to the humble. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in due time. Humility and to be humble is the exclusive preserve of Jehovah, of Father. So, what Jesus was saying, Jesus says, I am lowly in heart. When you come to learn of me, I will give you power with the Father. And meekness, the Bible says, the meek shall inherit the earth. So, I will give you power. To rule over the earth. That's what that scripture is saying. I give you power to have dominion. To have authority. Why? Because man fell. So when Jesus Christ came, he was trying to reenact the divine commission which the father gave to Adam. He said, come to me. I am meek. I will give you power under control. I will give you power Vertically with the Father and horizontally with the earth. Learn of me because I am the bread of life. Say, learn of me because in me all things consist. Learn of me because in him we live and move and have our being. He said, learn of me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. He said, learn of me. I am the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. Learn of me. Because without me, you can do nothing. Learn of me. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he be dead, 
yet I will raise him up on the last day. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can I have to be looking out for all of this place? Learn of me. Learn of me. We have learned about every other thing. But Jesus. And that's the reason why you see people who are in church for 15, 20 years. They know nothing about the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says to us, it is given the mystery of the kingdom of God. Learn of me. Learn of me. Where we tall shall a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed to the word of God. He said, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. He said, learn of me. In John 7, 49, the Bible says, for these people who do not know the law of their God, he said, they are cursed. You can be in church and you don't know the law of your God. You are oblivious of the divine protocols of Almighty God. You will not be blessed. For these people who do not know the law of their God, he said, they are cursed. In Matthew 22, verse 29, he says, you do it, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power thereof. The power of God is in his word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The same word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things we are made by the word. Without the word was nothing made. The Bible says in him was life. And that life was the light of man. And the light shined in darkness. And darkness could not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He was not that light. But he was to be a witness of the light. Even the true light. There lies everyone that comes into the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. Learn of me. Learn of me. I've come to challenge somebody this morning. I've come to provoke your love. The psalmist said, where can I find the living God? In the book of Sons of Solomon, he was going from city to city. Say, I am looking for the one whom my soul loved. I'm looking for my beloved. Where can I find him? When he found him, he said, he has made unto me a banquet table. And his banner over me is love. Somebody shout hallelujah. I didn't hear you shout the better Hallelujah. Serving God acceptably, there is no way you can serve God and get the revelation, the beauty of our service. When you serve him superficially and peripherally, he said, test and see that the Lord is God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Learn of me. Learn of me. I've come to provoke you to seek the Lord. Seek him. Let your first love and commitment be to him and to no other. Seek him. The Bible says, when you seek him, you shall find him. When you search for him with all of your heart. Somebody say amen. amen. I didn't hear you say a better amen. amen. Oh, a better amen again. Amen. Learn of me. I can stay here. Learn of me. I am all you need. I am the first and the last. And everything in between. Say, learn of me. Learn of me. Church, I've come to encourage you. After this Sunday service. Take a fresh resolution to know the Lord. Know him personally. First, Second Timothy 2.15 says, study to show yourself what? Approved unto God. 
a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Learn of him. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.19, it says, For we have a more sure word of prophecy, which we do well that we take heed unto. It's like the light that shines in the dark place until the day is done. And the day star arises in our heart. We have the most sure word. It's a sure word. A prophecy. Learn of me. And learn of my spirit. For the want of time, I'm going to move over to the second one. The second point we have to take into cognizance to serve God acceptably. Hear this, this is heavy. Is that we must make ourselves available to the personal dealings and the encounters of Almighty God. I want to say it again. You have to make yourself available to the personal dealings and encounters of God. These are not the kind of messages you hear in church today. And that's why the church is so porous and so powerless. Make yourself available to the personal dealings and the encounters of God. Hear this, everybody. Hear this. Whenever God wants to reveal himself to you through personal dealings and encounters, do you know what he does? Hear this. Look up, everybody. God will romantically and in divine jealousy, he will chase you down by his love into the wilderness. And in that place, he will reveal himself intimately to you. The revelation of God is on a personal basis, on one-on-one. -on -one. It takes God to reveal himself to you. He will chase you down into the wilderness. In the book of Hosea, chapter 2, verse number 14 and 15. Can you open Hosea very fast? I'm going to be faster now. Hosea, chapter 2. Everybody, please. Uh, media, can you project it for us? Hosea, chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Uh, can we read together? Everybody, one, two, ready, go. the valley of Akor for a door of hope uh -huh. and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth the day when she came out of the land of Egypt somebody say better amen he says I will allow her I will woo her as a young man was a young lady I will woo her to the wilderness and it's in the wilderness I will speak comfortably in wilderness, I revealed myself. In the wilderness, I revealed dimensions of my multifacetedness that your pastor does not know. No bishop will teach you in the wilderness. Somebody shout wilderness. wilderness. Oh, come on, church, help me shout wilderness. I will allow her to the wilderness. Hear this, everybody. Wilderness is not an expression of God's wickedness. Wilderness is the expression of God's love. For whom he loved, he chastises. For you are bastards if you are not chastised. For what son is he that is not chastised by the father? But when you are chastised by your father, then you know that his love abided within you. Somebody say amen. amen. He takes you to the wilderness. Hear this, everybody. Hear this, hear this, look up and listen up. The children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years. Somebody said 40 years. Help me, shout 40 years. 40 years. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. Moses was in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, two different times. John the Baptist was a man that literally lived in the wilderness. He was a wilderness man. He ate white honey and locusts. But listen to this. Hear this. 
The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 18, these things are heavy. I don't just want to cross over them. Give me Luke 1, 80, not 18, 80. Luke 1, verse 80. Everybody, let's read together. Hear me and help me, church. One, two, ready, go. Uh-huh. The child grew where? In the wilderness. He walked strong in the spirit. Where? In the wilderness. God hid him in the wilderness. Until the time of his showing forth to Israel. Wilderness is a place of incubation. It's a place of divine refining and transformation. When God wants to reveal you to the world, he first of all, he takes you into wilderness. Some of you right now, you are going through financial wilderness. But I got good news for you. That God is coming to you this morning and he's going to turn it around in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir. He says, I will turn around the valley of Akko to become the door of hope over there. And you shall sing as in the days when you came out of Egypt. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Wilderness. Hear me, church. As I round up with this point, listen to this. Today, we no longer preach about wilderness. Wilderness has become satanic and demonic. When people are going through wilderness, we think they have a devil without knowing that in real fact, they are the people that God loves. Nobody talks about wilderness. There are pastors in Nigeria today that have spent time with God. They have sacrificed in the wilderness and God shoots them out like a clap of thunder. When they come out and they begin to manifest the different dimensions of God, the church, we are the first to say that they are the devil. Why? They are doing what you cannot do. Instead of you to humble yourself and receive with meekness the engrafted word of God that is able to save your soul. You say, hey, those pastors, they are of the devil. Many of them are not of the devil. Many have paid the price in the wilderness. Somebody say amen. amen. Wilderness! It's a place of power. Somebody shout power. power. I'm not hearing you shout power. <laughs> Come on, shout. You got to help me this morning. Shout power. power. Wilderness is a place of power. The church is useless and irrelevant outside of raw power. That is our trademark, power. For you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, all to the uttermost part of the world. You shall receive power, not money, not gold, power. Somebody shout power. power. Hey, help me shout power. power. It's power. Power to heal the sick. Before Jesus went to heaven, Mark 16. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. The signs should follow you. Not you going to Juju man. Not you having to walk at miracle. You got fake miracle. Hey, somebody's walking. That's, it's an indictment. Power should follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demon. In my name, they will speak with new tongue. In my name, they will take up serpents. If they eat any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Every Sunday service, because of the, what they call the corporate generated energy, which every believer brings to church, 
when we come here on Sundays, the pastor does not need to pray for anybody. Just here at the time of worship, lifting up holy hands to a holy God, sicknesses are leaving people. Miracles are happening. Visitations are taking place. Why? Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Somebody shout hallelujah. I didn't hear you shout hallelujah. That's what God expects of the church. In Luke chapter 1, verse number, uh, I think 17, 17, hear this. The Bible says that the disciples of Jesus, they came back and they said, Master, Master, he said, even the devils, the devils, he said, they are subject to us at your name. They are subject to us at your name. When you go down in verse 19, he said, for you shall receive what? Power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all of the powers of the enemy and nothing. Somebody said nothing. I didn't hear you shout nothing. Church, help me shout nothing. Nothing. I feel terribly, you know, disgusted. When I see believers full of the Holy Ghost die of cancer, die of a satanic attack, you begin to answer. Ask yourself, what has happened to the exousia and to the dynamis of God within us? What has happened? What has happened? In Matthew 28, I love this. Listen to this. In Matthew 28, Jesus said, before he left his farewell speech, he says, all power in heaven and on earth is being given to me. He said, therefore, in this power, he said, go, go to all nations, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to observe all things that I have taught you. Say, Lord, I will be with you. That tells me, here church everybody, it tells me the power to grow the church is in us. It takes power to win souls. It takes power to have the souls and the members retained in church. The Bible says, where the carcass is, that is where the vultures will gather. Somebody shout hallelujah. I didn't hear you shout about the hallelujah. I know you may not like this because it's not a message of milk and butter. It's not a message, you know, of miracle and breakthrough. This is actually what we need in the body of Christ. It's what we need. Every other thing is deception. Jesus said, learn of me. Learn of me. You cannot circumvent or evade the dealings of God and his encounters in your life if you want to go far with God. You can't. You can't. I have gone many years without food. There was a time, one of God in my life, when I closed my eye in my dream, I would see myself naked in the church. I'm walking in the street, then naked, everywhere. I said, God, what is this? He said, that is a sign. You know, the, we, the position that you truly are, the devil has ripped you of every glory. Then he says, I am going to hey, restore you. Restoration is coming to somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh. You cannot run away from the divine dealings of God. You cannot. We need power to make disciples. Power to have people leave church and come back. I'm a pastor. I run a church. I have a church. I can tell you, it takes miracle to have one member sitting in the church. It takes God to have people come to church, go, and come back again. No man can do it except power. Somebody shout power. I need help. Shout power. I'm saying these things because I want to provoke you. After this service, go and begin to see God. That God may validate you. Paul says, we are not among those who are approved of men. 
We are not. It's only God that can approve you. And for God to approve you, boy, you cannot avoid wilderness. Wilderness is good. It's an act of God's love. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And he has shot a better hallelujah. hallelujah. And finally, the third point that will help you serve God acceptably. I love this. Is that you must serve him within the covenants of sacrifice. I want to say it again. For you to serve God acceptably, you must serve him within the confines of covenant sacrifice. Listen up, everybody. Look at me. Look at me. The kingdom of God is designed in such a way. Hear this, everybody. God himself designed it. God made it impossible that no man born of a woman can do anything remarkable or outstanding in the kingdom outside of sacrifice. I want you to listen up very well. God designed it purposefully. Nobody can do anything remarkable and outstanding in the kingdom of God outside of sacrifice. That's why he said in Psalm 50 verse 5, he said, gather to me my saints who have entered into the covenant of sacrifice. He said, get them to me. I have a special law for them. My servants, my saints who have entered into a covenant of sacrifice. He said, get them. I love them. Because many of us, that's why we read this, the text we read in 1 Corinthians. Many of us actually think we are serving God. There are many people truly are not serving God. If you are serving to God and coming to church, everything is at the altar of convenience. You are not serving God. You may be disappointed at the end of the day. Gather unto me my saints who have entered into the covenant of sacrifice. He said, bring them. To serve God sacrificially. Now listen to this everybody. Hear this. Holy Spirit is so wonderful. Hear this everybody. In Genesis chapter 4. Verse number 4. God required an offering. From two brothers. Cain and Abel. Somebody say Cain. Oh help me. Shout Cain. Shout Abel. One more say Cain. Say Abel. God required offering from two brothers. Cain and Abel. And the Bible says, Cain gave of the fruit of the ground because he was a farmer. And Abel gave the firstling of his flock. When you go to Hebrews chapter 11, first of all, in Genesis chapter 4, what they were asked to bring was what? Offering. Somebody say offering. offering. I didn't hear you shout offering. offering. They were asked to bring offering. When you go to Hebrews chapter 11, can you put Hebrews 11 for us, verse 4? I want you to see something. See something. Hebrew 11 verse 4. Everybody. Are we there? Oh, come on. Help me. Everybody want to ready to go. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent word uh -huh, than Cain. Uh -huh, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. Uh -huh, and by it, being dead, yet what? Speak it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Abel offered. He gave an offering in Genesis chapter 4. But in Hebrew, God says the offering was a sacrifice. In the sight of God, that was a sacrifice. By faith, he offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Not a more excellent offering. A more excellent sacrifice. Why? He said, though Abel is dead, but his sacrifice is speaking. Listening to this church, what I'm sharing with you, God taught me. I've never preached it anywhere. This is my first time preaching these things. Hear me. 
you can do better. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now hear this, everybody. Hear this, everybody. The Lord said to me that every covenant of sacrifice, every act of sacrifice in the kingdom of God has a voice that speaks continually before the throne. Every act of covenant has a voice that speaks continually before the throne room of God. Hebrew 12, 24. Because the sacrifice of Jesus was a covenant of sacrifice, the Bible says in Hebrew 12, 24, that the blood of Jesus speaketh what? Better things. Somebody shout better things. Church, help me. Shout better things. The blood of Jesus is speaking till tomorrow. Speaking better. Why? That was a covenant of sacrifice. In 2 Kings, I love this. You will blow your mind. In 2 Kings, the Bible declared that the children of Israel went to war against the Moabites. Against the Moabites. And the children of Israel had an upper hand. And they were defeating the Moabites on all fronts. And the king of the Moabites reinforced his armies and wanted to have a breakthrough. He failed. Somebody said breakthrough. I didn't hear you. The church likes breakthrough. Can you say breakthrough? We love breakthrough. You guys suddenly have come alive. Somebody shall break through. <laughs> The king wanted breakthrough. He wanted to break through the ranks of the Israel army. When he tried, he failed. He reinforced his soldiers a second time. He tried to break through. He failed. Hear this. The Bible says when he saw that defeat was imminent, do you know what he did? He took his first son. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha. He took his first son, her apparent to the throne. He took the first son and slaughtered him and gave him as a sacrifice to the gods of the Moabites. Hear this. The Bible says as soon as he did that, there was great indignation from God against Israel. God told Israel, go home. You can't win in this battle. Go home. You cannot win in this battle. This man has offered a deadly sacrifice that is speaking even before the throne of God. The sacrifice was offered to his God, but the response was picked up, the signal at the throne of God. He said, go home. You can't win in this battle. You can't. And the Holy Ghost told me, he said, the spiritual realm is an open market. He that offers the greatest sacrifice carries the day. The spiritual realm is an open market. He that offers the more deadly sacrifice wins the day. Ah, that's the reason why many of us, we are born again. The blood of Jesus is speaking for Yes, the blood of Jesus is the highest sacrifice. But the blood has to be acted upon by faith. By faith. For faith without works is dead. Many of us don't want to do anything. No wonder. Before the elections, we saw people who were supporting the incumbent president. One of them, a commissioner, went to Babish and was baffing, taking bet. Naked. Oh, go. God of mommy water, come and help my ogre. Come and help. You will call his name. You will see thunder. But mommy water will answer. They make all kinds of sacrifices. We will ask you to bring money so we can advance the cause of the kingdom. Everybody will run away. Unbelievers are willing to spend anything for their God. He told them, go home. You can't win in this battle. This man has offered a deadly sacrifice. 
What sacrifices are you making? Huh? What is speaking for you before the throne of God? Some of you will say, Pastor, that's Old Testament. I tell you, this is a covenant pattern that transcends dispensations. In the New Testament, in the, look, in the book of Luke chapter 7, a man, a centurion, built a church, a synagogue for the people. And one of his servants was sick and was about to die. It was the people of the town that went and constrained Jesus. He said, come, this man is a good man. He loves our nation and he built us a synagogue. He said he is worthy. Go and heal the son. Luke 7. In the New Testament. In Acts chapter 10. Talks about Colinus. Colinus was of Italian band. He loved God. A non-believer. He loved God. They say he loved the people. He loved thanksgiving and prayers. At a point, the Bible says, Colinus, he sent an angel. Your prayers and your almsgiving have come to me as a memorial. What are you sacrificing to God as a believer that is speaking as a memorial before you in heaven? Rise up, everybody. Right. Get up, everybody. In Acts chapter 9, as I round up, a young lady committed in the church in the old times. Her name was called Dorcas or Tabitha. A woman of sacrifice. A woman that loved God. She would go out of her way. She would cook and give to the brethren. She would make apparels and dresses and give to the poor. And the widows took care of them. And the Bible says, this lady died. <laughs> it was the church members that went to Apostle for Peter. He said, Peter, come. We have a member of our church that just died. He said, this woman, <laughs> he said, her act of covenant sacrifice is unprecedented. We cannot allow her to die. Because nobody can replace her. Do you know, hear me, church, everybody. Look at, look, at, look at me. Hear me. If you are not a man, a person of kingdom sacrifice, you can die at any time. Your life is cheap. But if you are a man, a woman, that understands the mysteries of the kingdom, and you know how to make dangerous sacrifice for the kingdom, <laughs> even when you are to die, God will turn it around, and there will be a divine exchange in the spirit. God will look for one useless person who is not, who is not serious. He said, you can't die now. You are too useful to me. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Serving the Lord by the covenant of sacrifice. What are you, even in this church right now, what are you sacrificing? What is speaking for you? How many persons have you put on scholarship? What's the sacrifice you're making? Just see, COVID that ended since 2020. COVID has permanently driven away many people from the church. That's to tell you the quality, how flaky our members are. The apostles of old, they could not recant. They preferred to die than to recant. Why? Because they have a personal revelation of who Jesus is. Not what they were taught. Job said, I've heard about you with the hearing of my ears. He said, now, my eyes see you. I bestead the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. What sacrifice are you making? 
Can you bow down your, your, your head this morning? What sacrifice? What is speaking for you? If you have to come to church and everything you have to do for God is by the act of covenant, you have a, a long way to go with God. Bow down your head. I want you to begin to talk to God right now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call some of you this morning to take some deadly steps and do certain things for the kingdom of God that will speak as a memorial before you. First of all, if you are in this house, all eyes closed, every head bow. You are here this morning, you are watching online, all over the world, a closing group. And you have not given your life to Jesus. You are not born again. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see and he cannot enter. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit of God. He is none of God's. You want to give your life to Jesus. You are in church here. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I say, Lord, this morning, I rededicate my life. I have not been serving you with sufficient sacrifice. Today, I want to rededicate my life. If you are here this morning, please signify by lifting up your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I want to rededicate my life to categories of people. Lift up your hands. In one minute, I'm about to pray for you. Anybody? Lift it up as I pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for your sons and daughters even as they lift up your hands signifying their act of total surrender. Lord, I ask of oh God that this morning that there be the sufficient supply of your spirit. Lord, that you will help them going forward to live a more dedicated and sacrificial life to you. I ask, Lord, that you write your name in the books of life. Do something new in their life. Open up a new chapter. Open up a new page and start afresh with them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I have been sent by the Lord himself. The Bible says he sent his word to Jacob. But that same word lighted up Israel. This word is lighting up somebody's heart. I came here for one person or maybe two persons. This message is not for everybody. There is somebody, some targeted people. You are at the crossroad. And you are believing God for something monumental. And God says, I need you to provoke me by a sacrifice. Provoke me by an act of sacrifice. Do something that will be speaking for you on daily basis before the throne. You are here. You want to do and take a step of faith to say, Father, I want to make an act of sacrifice. Only you know what you want to do for God. If you are here this morning and God sent me, I want to pray for you. Can I have an anointing on you, please? Come here. 
I'm going to lay my hands on you and pray for you. You want to do something extraordinarily sacrificial. The king of the Moabite took his first son who was to reign in his stead and sacrificed them. The Bible says there was great indignation against Israel. And God said, Israel, go home. This battle, you can't win it. I am not telling you what is in my head. I am telling you I am alive today because of what I'm sharing with you. struggling, I want you to step out by faith. Stop contemplating. Come. This opportunity may not come by again. God sent me to you. I want you to provoke heaven. about I'm giving you one more minute stop struggling stop scum and see the goodness of God in the land of the living come believe the Lord it's for you for you for your generation yet unborn One minute, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> you want to say, Father, I am tired of this siege. It could be health, it could be business, it could be whatever. I want you to provoke God. Come. uncommon sacrifice. Let the heavens open on her behalf in the name of Jesus. Let the angel of his presence follow you from this very moment to bring about the performance of that which has been spoken. Thank you. that you confirm your word. The Bible says the God who has sundry times and in diverse manners spoke to our fathers through the prophets. But in these last days you are speaking to us expressly by the spirit of your son. Lord, let there be a confirmation of the word that has been spoken. As this young man challenges you 
you an act of sacrifice. Confirm your word. Confirm your word. Confirm your word. Confirm your word. Lord, confirm your word. This young lady. Lord. Obeys you by the act of kingdom sacrifice. Respond, Lord, and do what no man can do. Confirm the word of your servants and perform the counsel of your messenger. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Young man, come on, kneel down. Look at me. I don't know who you are, but the Lord said I should tell you. God is going to raise you up. He's going to make you a sign and a wonder in your family. You have no form. You have no comeliness. As a matter of fact, the Spirit of God is telling me that you don't even understand why you are here. But God was the one that brought you here. From today, the hand of God that do it valiantly is going to rest upon you. And God from today will begin to guide your steps and he will bring you into your safe heaven in the name of Jesus. Get serious with God. Get committed with God. The Lord is going to blow your mind in the name of Jesus. Even that anointing on you. Father, today I break every curse is over the life of this young man every power that have resisted him from his generation and ancestral bloodline today I break the power in the name of Jesus Christ I release you enter into your divine inheritance in God May the hand of God lift you up. You will live and not die. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Now look at me. Stand up after service. Go and see your pastor. Okay? Whatever you want God, you want to do for God. Tell it to your pastor, okay? And discuss with him. God will bless you. The pastor will give you my phone number so you can call me when the testimony comes so we can rejoice together. So put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Everyone standing. Standing.